about it. How does the butterfly effect that change rap forever, bro? If if somebody starts like um glazing, I'm gonna be a little mad is though. The idea that a small occurrence can end up having a much greater effect elsewhere. Yep. The name of the effect until dawn. The Shout out until dawn. As wings might create tiny changes in the atmosphere that may ultimately alter the path of a tornado. I don't delay, fuck no sense. Or even prevent the occurrence. I don't of a make no goddamn location. sense. But okay. changing one small thing in the past, the best rapper in your opinion, leads to a completely different outcome than what we I see mean, today. I mean, I don't know who the best rapper is, but I got a favorite rapper. How does this affect LeBron's legacy? Mean where people Nigga, showed how completely random events in history affected the legacy of LeBron James. To pay homage to okay. that, I'll start the video with how LeBron being good at basketball led to four of the greatest rappers ever collaborating for the first and only time. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Listen, I did say if it was dick riding, I would click off, but I kind of am intrigued now. What, like, what, what is bro, what is bro, like, talking about now? Okay. Let me know. The year is 2008, and LeBron's generation W editing, W editing, receiving his own documentary film. Oh my film nigga, nobody is jumping like this though. I've never listen, listen, listen. listen. Le Sperm James, LeBron James, Le Goat James. He dunks and shit, but he's never, he's never got that high into the air ever. Stop it, bro. You playing film Gartic today? Film. Yes, I am. The film needed a soundtrack, and one of the artists enlisted for the task was Drake. Drake decided okay. to use a song that he had in the vault rather than making a whole new one. The song he chose was what titled I Want This Forever and featured Lil Wayne and Kid Kid. Drake decided that he wanted more greatness on the song for LeBron's documentary, so he removed Kid Kid from the song entirely Damn. and got Kanye West and Eminem. Oh. Nah, hey, Kid Kid, whoever you are, my boy. That nigga probably would have been up there today, bro. They, he put Eminem in that bitch. He took out Kid Kid, bro. Hey, man, I feel I feel bad for Kid Kid, man. He ain't even deserve that shit. He ain't even deserve that shit, bro. Real shit. Yeah. Yo, yo, justice for Kid Kid, nigga, wherever he is nowadays. Wherever he is, bro. Garchik soon. Uh, after this the video, yeah. Place him. The verse yo. Eminem turned in actually caused Kanye and Lil Wayne both to redo their verses for the song due to how much they liked Why? it and didn't want it to completely overshadow them. Oh Jay -Z shit! Went on to okay. Call the song the best posse cut of the decade, and many fans and even critics right, Dick agreed with the statement. Nah, I'm kidding. If I'm not kidding. for LeBron's stellar play on the court, the best the decision song Drake ever made is to grow a beard because he ugly Kanye, as hell without Eminem, it. My Wayne, nigga, Drake. the Speaking um, of Drake, okay. His father getting arrested led to him becoming the biggest rapper on earth right now. Nigga. The story starts what? in 1991 when okay. Drake was just five years old and his parents got divorced. Okay. After the divorce, Drake and his mother remained in Toronto while his father returned to Memphis. The divorce okay. left Drake's father with insufficient funds, which led him down the path of selling drugs. Okay. It was this illegal career path that caused his eventual incarceration for this a nigga like years. fucking 50 years old selling drugs and shit. I mean, okay. A little too old, but little whatever. did anyone know that this. Hey, aren't you too old to be selling drugs? In disguise. While in jail, also, father shared Nuri a on both worlds. I appreciate the follow. To to. Welcome to the stream. He went by the name Poverty. Drake's Poverty. father shared his phone time with Poverty, and Poverty would use that phone time to rap to a teenage Drake. After a while, Drake started to get into it and began to write his own. Oh shit! I was gonna say this nigga really do got a ghostwriter. Some nigga in jail is literally giving him all the songs and shit. Lyrics down. They began the aliens aren't real. The phone. I want to believe that to too, bro. As what inspired him to pursue but Scott rap. Pilgrim exists. We used to kind of Sorry. use the remainder of my dad's phone nah, time and just rap, rap and rap until it cut off. I, I never <laughs> knew his real name or anything, but um, but yeah, he definitely gets a lot of credit in those in those. Bitch, y'all was not freestyling like that. Drake flowers in 2015 on the song "You in the Six, where he credits their raps over the phone for winning him a Grammy. Uh, An arrest wasn't only a good thing for Drake. It was also great for one of Drake's biggest rivals, XXX Tentacion. Okay. X was arrested in 2013 for possession of a gun. He was sent to a juvenile detention center, and it was here that he would meet okay. Stokely Goldborn, aka Stokely Goldborn. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I know my name is like random as fuck, but Stokely Goldborn, my nigga, who was in the fucking birth or labor? The labor department giving you that name, bro. I, I genuinely feel bad for that shit. What type of... Who the fuck gives you that name? Ski had just been arrested for possessing around $10 Why? worth of weed. God One damn. day, Ski spit a freestyle for X while they were inside just for fun. 
This led to them continually freestyling together in a non Oh, niggas just love freestyling in jail, bro. Write some stuff down. They quickly became Use it wisely. and even made plans for what they were going to do together once they were released. The original plan they had was to commit a string of home invasions together for monetary gain, but this plan changed when X was released and bought a blue snowball microphone to begin recording music. Yeah. Um W idea, nigga. What the fuck? Nigga, yeah. Let's go and get back in here again. Let's get out and get back in here again, man. Yeah. Music. This convinced me okay. to do the same, and the two pushed each other to start rapping. The, the duo the frequently collaborated together, with X initially joining Ski's group Very Rare before breaking off and starting the Members Only Collective, which Ski okay. Master also joined. They okay. both went on to have incredible success in the music industry until X was tragically Dude, assassinated in 2018. All out, Rest nigga. In peace, Jose. Drake, I know you did it. Nah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Please don't kill me. Another artist who tragically passed away is Juice World. One of Juice World's favorite artists, Future, actually indirectly caused an addiction that played a part in Juice's uh, ultimate demise. What the fuck? Alright, bro. You can't blame this nigga Future for having bad decisions and this nigga dick riding so that he would do bad decisions too. What the fuck? This is not the butterfly effect. I mean, technically it is, but come on now. Come on now. When Juice met also, for the first time in 2018, Otis Fox, the first hello. Thing he told him about was hello. How he influenced him to Welcome try to me. the stream. In an interview talking about this moment, I appreciate Future you said, for tuning in. When he told me that, I was like, oh, sh what the fuck have I done? It really bothered me. It bothered me a lot. He also stated, oh, shit. I wasn't aware of that influence, but now I'm aware of how much it influenced. Yes, yes, I know that millions of people adore me and listen to my music, but I wasn't really aware of that influence. It's like, that's that's like a cop out for a lot of niggas, bro. Like, stop, like, be for real, bro. You know what type of influence you have. I mean, I guess if you do like get up there real quick, you don't realize how fast niggas adore you. But like, like this really me up for a minute. It's all I could think about. Like, damn, what have I done? What have I done to other people? This nigga going what through a character myself? arc, bro. You didn't. Did Future know at the time how much more tragic this revelation was about to become? Juice World sadly passed away on December 8th, 2019, due to an accidental overdose of oxycodone and codeine, which, as you may or may not know, is the key ingredient in lean, the same drug Future indirectly influenced Juice World to try. Rest in Fuck. peace, Juice. R.I.P. R.I.P. X. R.I.P. Juice, for real. Another artist who had a massive impact on Juice World, among countless others, is Kanye West. Okay. His 2008 album, 808s and Heartbreak, influenced an entire new generation of rap, but this album would have likely never been created if it weren't for the tragedies that inspired it. Okay. Early on in his career. I mean, I feel like that's obvious. You feel me? That's why it's called 808 Heartbreaks. Uh, I, I, it wouldn't really make sense if he just made it for that. Kanye moved to Los Angeles. This is depressing. No, no, it's going to get happier. It's going to get happier. Opportunities it had to offer. When he moved, his mother moved with him as she was his manager at the time. Okay. With the scrutiny of the media on her now famous son and herself by proxy of acting as his manager, she decided that she would have cosmetic procedures done to feel better about her body now that she was okay. essentially a public figure and a focus of the paparazzi. I feel, that, I feel that. I feel that. In Donda passed away at age 58 due to coronary artery disease and multiple post-operative factors from her cosmetic surgery. Kanye blamed himself for this happening, stating that if he never moved to LA, she'd still be alive. Damn. A few months after Donda's passing, Kanye and R. his R. fiance Donda. Alexis Pfeiffer ended their engagement and long-term relationship. Which Yo, was Alexis. Done in 2002. Wait, what? Emotionally drained and feeling somewhat Damn. lost, Kanye dealt with his pain by channeling it into music. Nigga got a boosty fade, bro. It's in heartbreak. The album released really on November chill. 24th, 2008, and made an immediate impact on hip hop, pop, and R&B music. As a new L woman, rappers, nigga, what? Producers adopted. Do you think it was a butterfly effect that made Kanye? Who knows? It could have been. Nigga, what? Bro. <laughs> maybe, bro. Maybe, bro. I, I don't know, bro. Maybe it could have been, though. Stylistic and thematic elements. It has been credited for bringing emotional lyrics and autotune to the mainstream, pioneering the emo rap and experimental R&B subgenres in particular. Okay. Some of the biggest artists that this album had a major influence on. Oh, why is Drake, Travis Peter, Scott here, B. bro? B. Ew. Kid Cudi, Juice World, Lil Uzi Kid Bert, Cudi. Travis Scott. Speaking of Travis Scott, oh you know my it God, Victoria Monet and Tommy Brown letting him sleep on their couch that he may have never gotten signed and blown up the way he did early on in. Hey, hey, whoever these two niggas are, I hate y'all. Travis's career nah, moved to LA in hopes to grow as an artist. 
When he first moved there, he lived with singer-songwriter Victoria Monet, along with record producer-songwriter Tommy Brown. They okay. allowed Travis to sleep on their couch. Victoria claims that one day Travis took song files from Tommy and showed them to Kanye, saying that he was the one who produced them. She also said he took a song she had written a hook to and gave it to Tiana Taylor for her to do and change just a little bit. Tommy Brown ended up finding all this out because the footage was on. What? See, I knew I didn't like this nigga for some reason. Now it's all coming to fruition. That's why, bro. That's why, man, I knew it, man. Like, this ugly ass nigga, bro, steal his lyrics and shit. Steal his songs, bro. What the fuck? They got his goddamn hard drive, man. On his hard drive, and he saw Travis fuck. in the studio trying to act like he made everything. Some people claim that without Travis using stolen content to impress Kanye, that he never would have gotten signed and blown up the way he did. Someone else yeah, who in a crazy way is Little Nas X. All right, spoke. see, now we're talking about real fucking music, nigga. God damn, bro. He popularity from about his hit time. song, Old Town Road, which yeah. is actually just a joke song he made inspired by a video game. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game that was okay. released on October 26, 2018. A little over a month after its release, Lil Nas dropped the song Old Town Road, which took inspiration from the Red Dead Redemption 2 game. Oh, or the just fucking the cowboys, but yeah. released was a YouTube video visualizer with all the footage taken directly from the Red Dead Redemption 2. Nigga. The description of the video also stated that the song was a joke. Lil Nas posted memes to promote the song, and it was oh soon my God. picked up by TikTok users. It started to gain traction in Fire late ass December game, play it five. after the Yeehaw Challenge meme, the where show. users created short videos using the song. This beat, like, lame ass little fucking trend, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I'm glad at where TikTok is right now, bro. I would have been, I would have been turned off TikTok if it was, if, if niggas, <clears throat> if niggas still did like trends like this and shit, bro. I'm, I'm so happy that I go on TikTok and I just see the dumbest fucking Fortnite OG meme or, or some JJK shit or something, bro. I'm happy, man. I'm happy at what TikTok is becoming. Challenge is credited for launching the song to enter the Billboard Hall And Minecraft gameplay, bro. Lil Nas released if you're thinking about it, if you were born a year before your whole life could be on completely different. What the heck? You're so right. Duh. Uh, yeah, like that's not even like, uh, I mean, of course. Yeah. I mean, I would have been the same real nigga I was, bro. Like, I would literally be the same if I was born at the same year Rosa Parks were born. I would literally be right here sitting down streaming, nigga. I would be the same way I, if if I was born in the age of goddamn caveman, nigga. That's what I, I wish I wasn't born. That's not even what we're talking about. But, I mean, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel, though. You feel me? Some kids put out a Bible and started reading it to me because I was listening to Lil Nas X, August as he should. Old Town Road became the longest as he song should. to number one, being there for 19 weeks straight. If it wasn't for the game Red Dead Redemption 2, this record-breaking song would have never existed. God damn. Another song that almost never existed is Miss the Rage, specifically with the Playboy Cardi feature. Because this nigga can't fucking rap. The hell? Nigga, nigga was mad that Cardi had a better feature than it. It was actually the fault of a random fan that led to Trippy Red getting the highest charting single of his career. It all started in December of 2020 when Trippy played a snippet of his unreleased song, Miss the Rage, on Instagram. Okay. The song's intro was gaining traction on TikTok, and some fans began to fantasize about Playboy Cardi hopping on the same beat. In early 2021, That's someone uploaded dick riding. That's dick riding. Nigga just fantasizing like, ooh, what if Cardi was on this beat? Mm, what if niggas biting their lips and shit just thinking about Cardi on a fucking beat with Trippy Red, bro? What type of shit. Remake of the song. Everything ends up on TikTok. Hey. I mean, you take it as a good way or a bad way, really. Using its beat, but featuring Cardi's vocals from his leaked song, Want To. <laughs> This fan-made version of the song exploded on TikTok and Trippy Red took notice. The popularity of the Cardi remake led to Trippy actually asking Cardi to feature on the track. Cardi surprisingly oh, accepted and they went on surprisingly? to drop Trippy's highest Real shit. single, peaking at number Damn. 11. 11 Damn. is also the number of seconds it took. For Bitch, what the fuck? Yo, listen, W transitions, but that was random as fuck. Pop smoke to start the chain reaction that would lead to his own death. On February 18th, 2020, Pop Smoke and his friend made several posts online at an Airbnb they were staying at. 
One of these posts was an 11 second video of Pop Smoke showing off gifts he received from Amiri. Like the Mary, like the Mary. <laughs> Billy Jean, Billy Jean. All right, my nigga. Like Mary. He uploaded nigga, the video to Facebook and, and Instagram, but what he may not have realized is that the home address of the Airbnb was clearly. R.I.P. Pop Smoke, real shit. R.I.P. Pop Smoke. I'm not even finna say nothing else. Visible. The next day at around 4.30 a.m., five hooded men broke into the house through a second story balcony. It's a scary ass photo. The when they found Pop Smoke, he at first complied with their request for jewelry, but then tried to fight them and a confrontation broke out, which led to him being shot. Two of the robbers- Why? Okay, okay, listen, listen, listen. So you telling me, if I'm thinking, if I'm thinking about how the events went down, right? Five hooded men seen Pop Smoke's dick. Because, like, bro was showering. They caught him in the shower. Tried to rob the nigga while he was naked. Somebody must have started recording. That's what it is. Somebody, because listen, 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 listen. Listen, if a nigga caught me in the shower, right? Nigga caught me in the shower, boom. You got it, bro. Whatever you need, bro. I'm giving it to you, right? Here you go. And then... A nigga starts bringing out their phone. That's worse than a gun at this point, bro. That's worse than a gun, bro. Because now I know you finna use this as, like, evidence against me, nigga. I'm turning into a fucking kickboxer. Fucking a kung fu master, nigga. Butt naked fighting you niggas, bro. I'm not letting that shit happen, ever. Ever. I'm not getting recorded and not doing something, nigga. I'm turning into a different man. Different beast, nigga. Dead ass. I'm finna gain superpowers when that camera's on, bro. Fuck. I drunk. That's the most vulnerable state to die. No cap. Naked as fuck. R.I.P. Pop Smoke, though. Real shit. Like, I'm not even trying to make no jokes and shit. But, like, I'm just saying, like, if I was put in that situation. You feel me? began to kick him, but he Fucking was able horrifying. to get up and run downstairs. However, it was here that he was hit with two additional gunshots. The robbers made off with his Rolex, which they sold for a whopping $2,000. He listen. Listen. Listen, 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 listen. Listen. Hopefully this never happens, you feel me, obviously. But if I if I have, like, some very, very valuable shit, right? You take it from me, and you don't use it to do anything, I'm haunting your bitch ass. Like, if I was Pop Smoke, if I was put in Pop Smoke's place and a nigga sold my Rolex for 2000 that's just disrespectful to me first off, nigga. I'm haunting your bitch ass. That ass. I'm haunting you. That's so stupid, bro. It's just dumb niggas, bro. That's the bane of existence, bro. The bane of the earth is dumb niggas, bro. The bane of humanity is dumb niggas. I hate dumb niggas, bro. You wish you were a butterfly? No. No, nah, I'm glad who I am right now, you feel me? Glad I'm a real ass nigga every day. Five, what's your butterfly effect? Um, that's a good ass question, bro. Hmm. Let me think. Uh I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, maybe. Okay, so look, so look, so look. In fucking um in 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 uh what is it? I think it was like fifth grade elementary school. It's like, it's a more of like a really long butterfly effect. It's more like a really long butterfly effect or maybe a really short one. I don't know. So look, basically, um, in elementary school, right? I, I was a dumbass nigga. I was like this annoying little kid who just never shut up. Right. And, and I would get bad grades on shit and all that shit. I would steal too. Like, y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all don't have no idea what type of Zeman I was, nigga. I was a Zeman, right? So, boom. One day, second grade. Second grade, right? Um, I could see that. Second grade, right? Um. Okay. Um, second grade. Second grade, second grade, right? Uh, it was a day, right? When um, it was a Friday. It was a Friday, and 
you know how rare it was for a nigga to have a like a you know how rare it was for a nigga to have um a dollar in second grade for ice cream you feel me so everyone knew this one girl had a dollar in the class and she was the only one with a dollar in the class only one okay <laughs> And so my dumb ass, right? My dumb ass thought it was a good idea to steal that fucking dollar. And nigga, I was a master class thief, bro. I was a master class thief, nigga. Because I swiftly, I swiftly took that fucking dollar, nigga. Swiftly. Nigga, boom. Like that, right? So my dumb ass, again, my dumb ass... <laughs> Went to the, uh, goddamn, we went to the cafeteria. She couldn't fucking find her dollar, nigga. Like, she was like, where did it go? The whole class was like, yo, somebody stole her dollar. Nigga, I didn't give a fuck, nigga. I was fucking ruthless, right? <laughs> so my dumb ass, so my dumb ass got up, up that fucking cafeteria table. Cause like, um, uh, 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 so, so. Elementary schools, they put you in like a class lunch table, right? So your whole class sits at that one table. I got up from that shit. Felt like a fucking god. I walked up to that goddamn ice cream place. I walked to the to up to that ice cream place. And and nigga, I I wasn't flexing I had a dollar that day, so obviously I stole that bitch. Stole that bitch, right? So I grabbed that ice cream, strawberry shortcake ice cream. If you put two and two together, niggas figured out that I stole the fucking dollar. Niggas figure out that I stole the dollar because I was stupid and I chose to fucking spend it that exact day I stole it, right? So, boom. They caught me, nigga. I had to give the ice cream back to her. You feel me? Um, And and my dad figured it out. So, once my dad figured it out, you feel me? Uh, um, I think this was a, la like, um, okay. So, he sat me down. He sat me down in the living room, right? He sat me down in the living room. Bro sat there, you feel me? And I was sitting on the floor. I was sitting on the floor. And bro told me, he told me like, he told me something that put fear in my heart to this day, nigga. Right? And listen, 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 listen. 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 My family's African. I'm African. So we get down for real. You know what I'm saying? And I was, I didn't get whipped. I didn't get nothing. I didn't get goddamn punished. Nothing. All he said. All he said was, I could put my foot the foot in your mouth right now, bro. He and he like he was dead ass gonna do it. He was dead ass gonna do it. <laughs> he had his foot in front of my face. Nigga said, I could put it in here right now, nigga. He he didn't say the N-word. But he said that shit. And after that day, I stopped stealing. I stopped stealing. I became a good guy. Like, <laughs> I became a good guy. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it, literally. And after that day, I, I was just like, yeah, stealing is not even worth it, man, bro. I learned nothing from this. Um, Well, that was my butterfly effect. I mean, a nigga's not fucking putting a fucking foot in front of your face and goddamn, yeah, thug a lord. Shit, goddamn, need to... Mucus in my throat, but no, um, yes, Thug Lore, very much Thug Lore. Also, C, uh, CF4 Jack, welcome to the stream. Whole lot of yap, nigga. You, somebody asked me to tell a story, stupid ass nigga. And Pop All Smoke right, was rushed to the hospital where he was unable to recover from his injuries. The very All right, similar Pop Smoke though. By artist P. That's P. the moral of the story though. Shot during a robbery after his girlfriend posted their location on Instagram. Fuck, uh, rest in peace, dumb ass. Yeah, rest in peace to God. Wait, Another what's his name again? Uh, hold on, wait. Fate was met by artist PNB Rock. RIP PNB Rock, for real, for real. Was fatally shot during a robbery. Your dad his girlfriend you drove. posted their location on Instagram. Right, bro. Rest in peace to both. Another unfortunate passing in the rap you might as well be. is that of Eminem's best friend, Proof, which in a very that crazy looked like way led Speed's to dad. huge artists like Tyler, the creator. Starting during the production of the 2002 movie, Eight Mile, Eminem was working 16 hours a day and developed insomnia, which led to him obtaining an Ambien prescription. Oh my God. This was Eminem's first experience of drug addiction, and it quickly became a vicious cycle Japanese. involving other substances. 
It also didn't help that he was battling depression at the time. God Eminem damn. tried rehab in 2005, then relapsed and fell into an even deeper tailspin the next year. Oh, after his God. best friend Proof was fatally shot. When talking oh, about this time God. in his life, Eminem stated, "I went through a lot." Nigga looked like he could go. He he looked like Hugh Jackman right here. What the fuck? Switch, bro. He looked like Hugh Jackman right here. He could really be fucking Captain America or something. Chris Evans and Hugh Jackman mixed up together. Hold on, five. What would you do if your dad actually put it? Nigga, what do you... F he died. I would have to accept it, life. nigga. It just gave me a real legitimate Switch. excuse in my head, at least, to use drugs. I didn't care if my drug problem got worse at that point, so I took more pills. And the more I said f*** it and took more pills, the higher my tolerance got. The higher my tolerance got, the more I needed those pills in my body just to feel normal and not feel sick. This all caught up to him Type in December shit. of 2007 when he nearly died from an accidental methadone overdose. After the overdose, Eminem went back to using again, but he was scared by the near-death experience and ended up rehab where he finally got clean in April 2008. Hey, These good events shit, bro. inspired Eminem's next album titled Relapse, which he stated was the first time- Hey, Finn the Gen 98, I appreciate the follow, bro. Had fun recording in a long time. Five, we gonna Relapse play Roblox today? Probably not. Album that revolves around horror, drug rehabilitation, and of horror? course, Horror? What the hell does horror this even mean? went on to inspire A horror artists, album? One of the biggest being Tyler the Creator. Relapse oh. is the project that initially influenced Tyler's music style, which is clear, especially on his earlier project. Oh. 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 Okay. I understand now. It's because I Relapse inspired now. Tyler to make music, it can effectively be credited for influencing other artists like Billie Eilish, Lil Nas X, and Brock Hampton as well, because they were all Ooh. influenced by Tyler's music. The next but right, when are we gonna play a horror game? Nigga, October is over. To the rap genre, as without it occurring, hip hop may have never taken off in the first place. Meaning everything I've covered so far may have never taken place at all. The New York City blackout of 1977 was an electricity okay. blackout that affected most of New York City oh, on July 14th, no, boy. 14th in 1977. The blackout occurred when the city was facing a severe financial crisis, and many saw it as an opportunity for looting. While most sought food and domestic necessities, some focused their attention on electronic stores, breaking down doors and snatching Why? Equipment. For what? Nigga can't even use it. That nigga making an investment. That's what it is. But that's smart as fuck, though. There is no cameras nowhere. So nobody... I mean... Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? There's these four kids in my class who randomly shout out their family members' names. Hey... They just put it on There's a popular on, story that during the blackout, they probably just fly like that. DJ equipment from electronic stores, which led to many new DJs populating the area. Crews formed after mixing and matching newly gained equipment to form a cohesive system, and all this allegedly helped spark the hip hop genre. Oh, now, shit. I'll read some quotes from people who witnessed this all firsthand. Before the blackout, people in the Bronx had horrible sound systems. Queens and Brooklyn had the full banging systems at the beginning. But not too many people in the Bronx could afford big sound systems until after the blackout. Then everybody had sound. I mean, like, I feel like a lot of niggas could have just went to jail. Like, hold on, bro. You ain't had this shit before. Where, did, where the fuck you get it? We couldn't even use cash and shit, bro. Where, where, where you get that shit from? Boom. The blackout of 1977 is what helped to spawn a multitude of aspiring hip hop practitioners. Because prior to that, the majority of aspiring DJs didn't have two turntables and a mixer or the speakers. So when the blackout happened, it just seems that everybody got the same idea at the same time. And when the okay. lights came back on in New York City, everybody had DJ equipment. When you get to the blackout... I respect that, though. I respect that, though. Like, these niggas ain't try to get no fucking... They ain't try to get no food, no water. These niggas locked in on equipment to make their lives better. They locked into the grind. Not for temporary food and water. It shifts hip hop. It's a pivotal moment because the like grind is life, bro. That's what you're trying everybody. to say. Some dismiss the notion that the blackout provided a catalyst for hip hop's uprising, but many others who lived in New York City at the time of the blackout insist that the event helped jumpstart the early hip hop. Who's scene. denoting it? Thanks for watching. I ain't gonna lie, that was a W video. That was a W video, man. You know what I'm saying? That, that was a good ass fucking video. Uh, w butterfly effect, bro. Shout out until dawn, man. That's the only r real thing I fucking uh, uh like understand about uh uh what is it butterfly effect.